What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Listen, if you're first just coming in here, I would love for you, number one, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, to do that. Subscribe to this channel, click the bell to be notified, but also just say where you're from. So that way like, you can let people know. And this is a great platform where we can network, we can, can connect, we can do a whole lot of things. So just say where you're from, what city you're from, because you never know who is watching or who's on here in attendance to be like where you're from. So I'm gonna let y'all do that. I'm gonna play along with this song from uh, from the homie Timothy Bloom called Losing My Mind, all right? enough of that let's get in here and start answering these questions how y'all feeling today y'all feeling all right hopefully you guys are doing all right that's enough of a warm-up let you guys get in here and get started get situated well, who we have in here we got people from la we got people from north carolina we got people from houston we got people from the a we got people from toronto people from the bahamas yo from decatur that's what's up west point mississippi respect detroit in the house dc is in the house we got japan in the house wow we got charleston south carolina in the house Yo, that's what's up. That's what's up. Oh, man. This is really, 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 really dope. We got people from Toronto, from Vegas, from France. This is this is what this is all about. Listen, this is why I do this. Because I love to connect people. That's what it's all about. Somebody said, which Stratocaster is your favorite? Um, I'll show you which one is my favorite. Out of all the ones that I own, this is my favorite Strat. This one hands down down it's, it's got lambertones in it but in the bridge it's got the crema which is also from lambertones which is different from the one that i was just playing uh and that one it's got uh lambertones in it but in the bridge it's got the uh the grinder the grinder's a little bit more aggressive uh the cream is a little bit more warmer so that's the one i prefer but that's my favorite strat out of all the ones that i own uh, that's my favorite one so that's a great question Oh, uh, we got South Africa in the house. Weight loss looking good, bro. Keep it going, man. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. I'm on this journey, man. I'm on this journey. Andy's back in the house. That's what's up. Uh, what song were you playing? So the name of this song is called Losing My Mind by Timothy Bloom. I love that guitar, man. Can you uh, do a touch, alter, dominant, chord, maybe some grip? Thanks. Okay. <laughs> favorite PRS of yours. My favorite PRS that I own currently right now is my DGT. Is my favorite one. Um, what are your guitar pedal staples? Uh, for me, you got to have a tuner. You need to have a reverb pedal, a delay, and an overdrive. Those are just the, the bare bone basics. If I have those, and I feel like I can do any gig in the world. Now, like any gig in the world, you have to be specific because sometimes I need certain tones. So I would need something that allows me to modulate and have different kind of modulations, like choruses or flangers or whatever it, it may be. But those are the basic staple pedals that I need. Which are your favorite ones? Like pedals, like brand names are what you're talking about? Is that what you're asking? 
your favorite guitar uh, for the creamy honey types of R&B tones. I would have to say it's my Tom Anderson, uh, Raven. This bad boy right here. This is my go-to. This is the, the honey dip, honey doo -wop. Makes everything sound like butter. This is that bad boy. Uh, but most of my guitars are set up to give me the, the drip, to give me the sauce, to give me the honey, to give me the, the butter sauce, if y'all, what, what you want to call it. Most of my guitars are set up that way because that's how I play. Um, but that's like, that's my baby, baby, baby. You know what I mean? So, uh, specific pedals. So, uh, I know I typically play the Helix, um, but if I'm not playing the Helix, uh, Keeley makes a lot of nice pedals. Vertex makes a, not, a lot of nice pedals. Uh, Strymon makes a lot of nice pedals. There's so many different pedals out there that you can pick and choose. Really, a lot of the tone is already in your hands. The pedals just kind of enhance what's already in your hands. So don't get caught up on like the names of the, the types of pedals because it could really just be, uh, you could be chasing your tail in that, in that particular regard. Uh, any chord progressions that just piss you off when you hear them? <sighs> ah, piss me off when I hear them? Mm, I don't know, I, don't, I can't think of anything. Uh, do you think that you could do a tutorial on Really Love by D'Angelo? I uh, added to the list. I got a lot of things, but I added to the list. What is your go-to amp? My go-to amp is my Bad Cat Lynx. If I can't get the Bad Cat Lynx, then I like the Mesa Boogie Longstar. If I can't get that, then it's says a Fender DeVille with four tens. Um, I know you're a big fan. I know you're not. I know you're a big fan of Telecasters. I'm not a big fan of Telecasters. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of Telecasters. Uh, but which pickups would you recommend? Um, I think Lindy Fraley makes some good pickups for uh, Telecasters. What I was doing some research a while back because I, I have a few strats, I mean, a few Telecasters that I want to get fixed. I think Lindy Fraley does a really good job on Tele pickups. Um, hey, brother, just got started exploring R&B and Neil Soul, learning things from your channel. Love it, man. I really appreciate that. Really appreciate that. If you're brand new to this channel, do me a huge favor and subscribe. Please subscribe to this channel. Do me a huge solid. Go ahead and subscribe. Click the bell to be notified. And also, if you've ever heard me talk about it or mention it, if you've ever seen any of my testimonial videos from some of my campers talking about Carrie's Camp and what is that, you should go check it out. Go to carriescamp.com, K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. And become part of this community. If you really love R&B, you love what I'm teaching you here, but you're just like, man, this is really cool, but I want more in depth, that's where you go to get it at. We just dropped the link in the, in the um, comments, so go check that out. Check that out. Uh, what's your turnoff for Telecasters? My turnoff for Telecasters are, for me, they don't, they're not as versatile when I play them. They don't really give me what I'm looking for. So it's a, it's a personal preference, right? Um, so it's not like the Telecasters are horrible guitars. They just don't give me what I'm looking for. So that's why I'm not a huge fan of Telecasters. Which guitar pick do you use? I use the Bog Street Battle Axe. This is what I use. It's a little bit thick, but it's got great control and it's got great tone. Um, that wasn't meant to say. I knew you wasn't a fan. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Texas Specials and a Telecaster. Look, go ahead and let them know, Mike. Let them know. Let the people know, man. People are chiming in saying what are good um, pickups for Telecasters. So that's cool. Do you have a favorite progression? I don't necessarily have a favorite progression. I mean, there's a lot of different progressions that I play. So it just it just depends on how I'm feeling that day. You know what I mean? So your distortion tones on your Helix is so great. Man, appreciate it, man. I've done a lot of work to ensure that it's really 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 solid i literally sit here in my studio and i go i'm really meticulous about massaging the tone trying to find the right frequencies making sure that it's, it patches well with the front of the house that it pairs well with my amp like it's a lot of it's a lot of science that goes into it so it's a lot of tweaking to make sure so i really appreciate that that means a lot to me um hey carrie what would you record so what would you say that really helps you in advancing your guitar skills thanks what really helped me is consistency like you got to be consistent with your instrument. You can't pick it up one day and then like, you know, put it down for two weeks and then try to pick it back up. Consistency is what helps you really develop your skills. So that's why I created platforms like this YouTube channel. That's why I created platforms like Carrie's Camp that give you in depth how to practice, what to practice, how to how to gauge your progression and where you're going in your in your journey. That's how you're going to really get to the place that you want to get the desired skill level is number one, having a teacher, i.e. like myself, that knows what he's doing to kind of teach you and guide you to show you exactly what you need to do. But being consistent is really going to help you. That's the best tool because I can show you everything in the world, but if you're not consistent, it's just not going to work for you. 
What are your thoughts on the noiseless pickups in general? I am not. A, I mean, I, I don't have any kind of opinion about noiseless pickups. I've never really played them for real. I think I maybe played them once or twice on somebody else's guitar, but it's just not. It wasn't something that wowed me. You know what I mean? If you have a question on, on the price of Carrie's Camp, please email support at carrytoosmove.com and we'll we'll help you out. We'll hook you up. All right. Do you have a favorite key uh, that you like to sound um, in the most? So when I'm teaching, I like to teach in C because it gives me the most real estate. But I, I play in all my keys. All my keys are my favorite. Like I don't like they all provide different kind of tonalities, different kind of things. Like if you're asking me to do singer songwriter stuff, then I would love to try to play in G or A flat, maybe some stuff in D. Right. Um, R&B stuff could be really any kind of key. Pop could be in any kind of key. It doesn't matter. It just depends on the feel of the song. Uh, do you what do you do before you play live? I get butterflies. I pray. Honestly, that's what I do before any time I play. I pray that that anything that I may not remember that is it comes back to my mind that God will give it to me while I'm on stage, that, that we have a great show, that I'll have fun. Um, and I just I just pray before I go on stage. So it really helps with my anxiety. I meditate. I breathe. Make sure I do like breathing exercises. Breathe in. Count one, two, three, four. Breathe out. One, two, three, four. And I try to drink some water, eat a banana, some fruit, and then go have fun, you know? Hello, friend. Um, I follow you on your, Insta your, you know, your YouTube videos, and I see that you are used several guitars. What is your, uh, your indication for the Strat that has a great... So you're trying to ask me how much is, like, I have a bunch of different guitars. You're trying to ask me, like, the cost ratio for my guitars? Um... Honestly, if you're asking me how much most of my guitars cost, I can't really tell you that because I didn't pay for them. I was like, it was relationships. A lot of my guitars are relationships, um, but I know that they are expensive. But when it comes to me um, picking guitar, it's not about the price, it's about the feel. Like if a song feels a certain kind of way, then that's what I gravitate to. Like woods, you know, cosmetics, how it looks, aesthetics, whatever. But I'm more concerned about the feel of it because the guitar could be super pricey, not feel and not sound a certain kind of way. So. That's really what I focus in on. Um, help me not to have any pains in my wrist uh, now when I play. I also carry it, uh, the only teacher that I've ever had. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Chino Hills is in the house. What's your favorite song at the moment? Um, at the moment, I don't have a favorite song. I'm listening to a bunch of Afro beats. I'm listening to the new Drake album, I'm listening to the new Kanye album. So I haven't really, I don't, I haven't settled in on a favorite song just yet. Um. Man, I still bump fishing grits, man. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> Sweet. How do you get that R&B tone? If you want to really learn how to get the R&B tone, you need to become a camper. And I can show you specifically. Go to carriescamp.com. K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. And I promise you, I got you. I'm going to show you specifically. We're going to go through. I'm going to teach you how to do, really dial yourself in, really what to listen for, what to look for, what you should and shouldn't be doing. So I got you. Uh, any advice um, for guitar players with carpal tunnel? Um, my left hand. So if you have carpal tunnel, I would say like you want to make sure your strap is not too low. Like make sure your strap is is like your guitar doesn't sit low, so it won't be hard for you to kind of bend your wrist in order to make chords. Like so that way you're like almost the natural posture of your wrist is like this versus like this. So make sure your guitar is not sitting too low. Like tighten your strap up if you need to, so your guitar sits really in a nice spot. It may not look cool, but it's going to be effective. All right. Let's see some more questions that we have. Donda versus CLB. They're two different types of albums, man. So you really can't like I'm a I'm a huge Kanye West fan and I'm a huge Drake fan. So it's just like it's just like people who like Mercedes Benz and who like BMWs. You just gotta you gotta find what you like. You know what I mean? So we got Brazil is in the house. That's what's up. Have you ever seen Daryl Hall and uh, John Oates in concert? I've never seen them in concert. Uh, their music encourages me to, to learn R&B and soul music. Although I, I like all types of music. That's what's up, that's what's up. I didn't hear your answer to, I didn't hear your answer to me earlier uh, because the text came through answer. So I'll go back and check it. I just wanted to say thank you for doing what you do. I appreciate it, definitely appreciate it. Yeah, so this is an opportunity for us to connect. Um, it's Saturday, hope you guys are doing well. Um, if you got any questions, really, like it's about guitars, about practice, about the industry, about touring, whatever, this is the chance to kind of get connected. I want to definitely answer those questions for you. 
Also, if you're really interested in just trying to excel your guitar skills and you really want to make sure that you're really locked in, I invite you to become a camper. Literally, we have guitar players all over the world. It's one of the best communities of guitarists all over the world at all different skill levels. People that are brand new, that have never seen a guitar before, people who are intermediate, who've been around guitar for a little bit, have a general knowledge, or people who are semi-pro or pro, we have something in the camp for everybody. So I would love for you to be a, a part of the camp, to be a camper, to really understand how to unlock this fretboard and play with so much fluidity. So you check it out. There are links. We've already been putting the links in the, in the comments. But if you want to know, it's carryscamp.com, K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. I look forward to seeing you inside of the camp. All right, we got a few more things that came in. I'm guessing you like Drake uh, one on one, um, one more, right? Because of the R and B chorus, it's not necessarily about the R and B chorus. Like it's, I mean, it's when it comes to me listening to music, I am really a connoisseur. It's just like buying art. You know, it's essentially it's not just about because I have a, a preference for R and B that it's going to necessarily be the one that I go with. Um, I love the tonalities i like the stuff with the donda album because it reminds me of the old kanye some of the production behind it or whatever so it's really cool you know what i mean and i have a lot of friends that probably worked on the album uh that sing with the samples so you know it's like i have connections you know what i mean with with multiple people in that that worked for that album um greetings from texas keep sharing your, your talent man appreciate it and blessings and thank you a lot for the lessons man learned a lot from your r&b that's what's up i just bought a kemper lunchbox need help um, if you need help, I would tell you like, number one, I could give you what I know, but like there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube that can definitely help you probably have more knowledge than I do because I don't use a Kemper every single day. I use it very, very, you know, sporadically sometimes in my home studio. What is your favorite strings? Oh, I'm glad you asked. My favorite strings are the Santonos. These are my favorite strings. I'm telling you. These strings, bar none, hand down, are the best strings that I've ever played. And I've played a lot of strings. I've been playing guitar since I was 11, and I'm about to be 40. So I'm letting you know, these strings are where it's at. So if you want strings, this is the company you need to go to. I'm telling you. Um, this is, I'm telling you, man, listen. This company right here, number one, they give you a spare string. So if you like happen to break your E string all the time, then you can get a spare E string. I mean, it's, it's incredible. I'm, I love this company, man. They really hook you up, so. Definitely. Do you have skills in this maintenance, adjusting the action? I am not a, I'm not a tech guy. So I take my guitars usually to, to get handed off to a tech so the way they can know specifically what I, what they're doing. That's not my specialty. My specialty is not like the, the guitar, you know, geek nerd kind of stuff. I don't know that kind of stuff. I know what I like, but I don't know how to necessarily do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The big 40 man, September 17th. So I'm looking for it. You know what I'm saying? Yes, they make acoustic strings. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> they make acoustic strings as well. So they have all the, your string needs. They make acoustic strings as well. So Sweet. Your reverb sound sounds awesome live. What pedals are you using? So what I was using right here was the Boss ME80. Um, I have the Hall reverb effect on, and I have it turned to about like... I used to keep it between like 15 and 19. Um, what have you learned from your students that has helped you uh, improve your teaching skills? What have I learned from my students? Patience. I've learned patience from my students and I've learned that you have to make information digestible. If you don't make information digestible, it doesn't matter how much you give them, they're not going to process it. So. Planning on becoming a camper today. Yo, that's what's up. I've been putting it off for a long time. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. Join the camp, man. Join the camp. Seriously. Have any thoughts about using a baritone? Um, it's a niche guitar. So, like, for me, unless it's something for the studio, I probably would never use a baritone. That's just my personal preference. Sweet, sweet. Uh, do, do, do. do you like coated strings? No, I do not like coated strings. I, I honestly don't like the way they feel underneath my hands. And again, it's just personal preference. At the end of the day, all of this stuff is personal preference. You know what I mean? So 
Just like some people like Nikes versus some people like Adidas. You know, the shoes are shoes. Shoes are nice. Shoes are dope. They're going to be cool on your feet. They're going to make your feet feel great. But it's just a personal preference. So I personally don't like coated shrinks. Um, you know, that's what it is. Matter of fact, where do you buy those Santano shrinks? I'm going to see if, if um, somebody from my team can drop a link in there. Matter of fact, if we could drop the link in there and we could drop the discount code, that would be great. You know what I mean? So that way, like, all you guys could have, like, a little discount. So we're going to try to do that as soon as possible. Okay? How much time do you practice per day to get where you are? The Rock, honestly, my practice days vary. I'm, I, there's no... Some days I practice for 10 minutes. Some days I practice for like 15 hours, 14 hours. It just depends. They're all, my practice days are all over the place. It, but it is consistency. If I'm not consistent in, in my work, then it's just, it's not going to show, show up in my playing. So I got to be consistent. All right. Hey, Carrie, what kind of Pelican case are you using? Uh, Whatever that is. I don't know. Let's just look at it. It's a big pelican case. I don't know which one that is, but that's the one I'm using. So, I'm in the UK. Um, are the string sellers? Yeah, they're everywhere. So you can order them online, and then they'll ship them to you. You know what I mean? Uh, do, do, do. Mr. Red, I really enjoy the backing tracks in Carrie's camp. Wanting more. <laughs> I appreciate it. Trust to believe. I, I, it's in the works. I just got a lot of stuff that's on the plate. You know what I mean? Um, is it necessary to play the exact same quick licks another guitar player's played in the song? If it's um, a song that's recognizable, like if you're playing Yearning, you want to play the same licks. You don't want to just make up your own stuff. And it also depends on the artist that you're working with. If the band is not very specific, you may get away with it. But I would practice, like, you know what I'm saying, getting used to playing what's specifically in the song so the way wherever you go, you can sit in and people won't look at you like you don't know what you're doing. Uh, what do you like about PRS guitars? What I like about PRS guitars is the consistency of how they're built, right? You can grab four or five of the same model of the guitars and they all play the same way. You can't do that with a lot of other brands, a lot of big brands, because they just get it, in my opinion, they get into to the market of mass producing. So the attention to detail is not the same. So that's how I feel about, you know, PRS guitars. Uh, this was meant for me today. I've been putting off for years for the camp. Man, come on, Cedric, stop playing. I play CCM and need to get more into R&B. Cedric, I'm telling you, we got all the stuff that's going to help you really unlock the fretboard so you can start playing the way that you want to play. I promise you, don't have to worry about that. Uh, do, do, do. But PRS are, are very expensive. Yes, that's one of the reasons why they're expensive, but you can probably go on Reverb, um, you could go on eBay, you could find them for a little bit cheaper, but I'm saying the quality of the instrument is the reason why they're expensive. You know, they're not giving you something that's like, kind of like half-handed. They, they, it's a lot of attention to detail, okay? Uh, do you find it harder to be, uh, do you find it hard to be a replacement in an established band? No, not at all. I mean, because my job, I already know what my job is. My job is just to sit in and fill in that slot. So I've been, I've been doing that plenty of times. That's how I got on for like playing for majority of the artists. I, I started out as a sub and then eventually the gig fell in my, my lap. You know what I'm saying? So don't feel anxious or feel nervous about being the new kid in town. It is what it is. Like you got to get your feet in there and get wet so people can see who you are before they decide to give you that seat. So don't feel bad. You know, see what the guy did before. Like if they like that kind of stuff, mimic some of that stuff, but then add some of your own flavor in there as well. So they can see like what you could bring to the table for sure. Cause I heard a song with a really fast lick, but it's not necessary, but I want to keep the main solo. Yeah, if it's if you feel like the lick is not necessary in the songs that you're playing, then don't you don't have to do it. But now don't forsake, you know, you know, gotta be mindful of making sure that the, those licks that you're kind of like overlooking are like, okay, can you can kind of get rid of those. You can kind of discard them and not feel a certain kind of way. But so you want to make sure that you're locking in because it's really, really important as a guitarist, especially when that's your role and that's your job that you're playing those kind of licks that are in the song. All right. All right. PRS are priced for the quality. Just bought a hollow body PRS, uh, 1200 price of Fender and the Gibson. Cool. Yeah. I mean, like Gibson and Fenders are expensive too, but like the quality though is just not always great. You know what I mean? Some really good questions.
Listen, if you're brand new to this channel and you haven't already done me a, a huge solid and subscribe to this channel, please, please um, subscribe to this channel and click the bell to be notified because I will hop on here from time to time and do these lives. I'll play, we'll answer questions, we'll vibe out. Um, and I don't want you to miss that opportunity. Also, if you're looking to really try to unlock the fretboard and like, like I love the stuff that you're doing here, but I want more, I want to go deeper. You should check out Carrie's Camp. Um, go to carriescamp.com, K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. Oh, Bamba by 14, I'm with you, Mark. I'm with you. I'm with you when you're right. <laughs> Thanks for all you do, man. Those Q&As are really helping me out. Man, that's what it's all about. How do you keep yourself motivated when concepts are hard uh, to get down and you feel like guitars are not for you? Uh, so you have to ask yourself, because I've seen you on here before, Elon, and I've seen you like you know ask about you want to play professionally. If that's what your goal is, realize the journey is not going to be easy, but it's going to be worth it. So that's how you motivate yourself. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be worth it. And if I want to play at a high level, I'm going to have to lock in. I'm going to have to really do what's necessary. See, we just dropped the link in here I'm, I'm just for the strings. So if you want to know where the strings, where you can go get the strings, we dropped the link in here. And there's also the access code to give you a discount. So though all those people that were asking about the strings, the Santono strings, you could go in here, order your strings. And I'm also going to give you um, a discount code to help you guys out because because I love y'all. You know what I'm saying? I love y'all. But yeah, um, how I motivate myself is I understand what the assignment is. And just because it's not easy does not mean that it's not, I should quit. I got to lock in, even when it's tough and it's difficult because it's going to be worth it when it pays off. When I'm on that stage, when I'm in that chair, when I'm in that arena, it's going to be worth it. So you got to tell yourself, listen, it sucks right now. I got to figure it out. I got to get with someone that's going to help me try to figure it out. I got to take my time because that's, what's going to, that's what it has to be in order for me to get it. All great players have to go through the same thing. Now, there are some people who are just super talented, super gifted, they can hear it, they have perfect pitch, they don't have to work for it. Other of us, like myself, we have to work at it. We have to keep going and practicing and practicing and keep looping and doing whatever. But once we finally get it, it's well worth it, okay? I have gotten so much better um, learning from you in six months. Appreciate it. Especially playing by air. I'm getting better. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Carrie, I sent you an email. Please respond uh, when you get an opportunity. I'll have to go through. If you want to resend it, you can send it now so the way I can make sure I'm, I'm looking out for it because I have a lot of emails that come through every single day. Uh, do you have a manager or a team or are you finding gigs by yourself? I don't have to find gigs. Where I'm at in my career, um, a lot of people will just reach out and just be like, yo, I got a situation for you. So I don't have to find any kind of gigs. Somebody said you look Nigerian. It's, I am Nigerian. I found out uh, like two years ago that I am more Nigerian than anything. I knew that my, my mom's side of the family is from Sierra Leone. Then I know where my dad's side of the family is. So I did a, um, a DNA kit, a DNA test or whatever, and I found out that I'm more Nigerian. I'm from Nigeria. I'm Ghanaian um, and Sierra Leonean. Looking forward to the next uh, play to do. That's what's up. How do you deal with nerves when you're on stage? Uh, practice, number one, I practice hella hard. I practice super, super hard to make sure that when I get on stage, I am absolutely prepared. Before I go on stage, I pray. I make sure that like, listen, I'm like, I pray and I meditate. So I'm like, God, help me. If there's anything that I cannot remember, bring it back to my memory. Let me play, let me play skillfully. So that way that like, number one, the people in the audience have a great show that like, you know, they leave thinking that like, man, this was the greatest thing, whatever. Make me feel comfortable on stage. So I pray to kind of keep myself calm. And that's what I do. Uh, why do so many guitarists not know guitar music theory? You would have to ask them. I don't know. <laughs> I found guitar theory really helpful. It helped me advance in my... I, I cannot tell you why a lot, of, a lot of other people don't know. I cannot tell you. That's, that's something you would have to sit down and physically go through each person and ask them. Good morning. Good morning. Sweet. Which guitarists influence your style the most? Man, there's a lot of guitarists. Um, so I would say guitar players like Eric Walls, guitar players like Spanky, Alfred, um, guitar players like Kevin Wilson, guitarists like um, Sean Hinton, for sure, Jubu Smith, John Jubu Smith, um, Mark Letiri, 
uh, Corey Wong, man. I mean, there's a lot of guitar players out here that have a lot of cool stuff that I that I see. I'm like, oh man, they're just giving me a lot of like cool ideas. Uh, Nicholas Vinaglu, um, who else? Chris Payton, Agape Jerry, Jerry is Mosey, um, Jeff, just Jeff. Um, man, who else? There's so many guitar players. Did I say Chris Payton? Man, there's so many guitar players out here. You know what I'm saying? There's so many guitar players. Yeah, Jubu, but Carrie's my favorite. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. It means a lot. It means a lot. Good morning. Good morning. Bring back the morning worship. Uh, I definitely will. Like I posted a video on Instagram, so if you watch that, that's definitely my morning worship. Uh, do you think you can uh, get Ethan? I got Ethan uh, to do like a couple gospel things, whatever. I think I'll, I'll ask him. You know, you never know people's schedule. Um, I think I'll have to join Carrie's camp uh, one day. Man, you should definitely come on and join Carrie's camp. I'm, I promise you, you're really going to enjoy Carrie's camp. Uh, Carrie, how do you find interesting chord progressions without spending a thousand hours? I've spent a thousand hours. <laughs> I've been playing guitar since I was 11. So I spent over a thousand hours working and just getting stuff. So it's I've got years of experience to like really go through different kind of chord progressions. So it, it just didn't come overnight. You know what I'm saying? Uh, do you think you could get um, Tim Pierce on Carrie's camp? The thing about it is, I've reached out to these people, but they haven't responded. So I can't get, I can't make a person like just show up. They got to respond. I got to get something from their team. So just so we can have a conversation. How do you properly practice with a metronome? If you want to know how to properly practice with a metronome, you are a prime candidate for Carrie's camp because I have so many things that talk about your timing and your rhythm. Go to CarrieCamp.com, K E R R Y S K A M P.com. There was a time in my guitar career where I couldn't follow you, um, I couldn't keep up with you, so I didn't watch you, <laughs> watch you anymore. Now I'm at a place where I'm at the church and it says, the guitarist is my go-to. That's what's up, man. It's easier to learn from you because you filter out what's ne what's necessary, definitely. That's one of the things that I've learned along my life and I've, I've had a lot of different lessons. I've worked with a lot of people and I've talked to a lot of different people is seeing what's necessary. And that's what I want to give you guys because I'm, I'm a person that I don't want to carry extra weight for no reason, right? I want to practice extra stuff or learn stuff that's not really relevant. I want to give you the stuff that's necessary so you can sit in, out in that seat and really start playing and be more effective in your guitar journey. So that's what it's all about. I've had people ask me how I sound so good um, when I was only playing a major seven chord. Cool. The number system. If you want to learn the number system, you should definitely become a Carries Camper. Carries Camp, we teach you how to do the number system. K E R R Y S K A M P dot com. Uh, what are you working on uh, learning these days? What am I working on learning? The songs for the week. I mean, I play at a church, so I got to, I mean, that's, that's essentially all that I'm working on learning is just like music that I have to play for the week. I don't do anything else outside of that. Just if it's a studio session, I'll get ready for a studio session. If I'm teaching, then I'm going back and going over some material that either people have asked questions about that I feel like, oh, that needs to be a little bit more focused. But stuff that I'm learning is just either the music for the week or just something I need to do for social media post. Like it might be a song that I'm just learning like last minute. You know what I mean? says, when are you getting back on tour? Love your tour vlogs. Um, when am I getting back on tour? Whenever somebody calls me. Honestly, I mean, I moved from LA. So a lot of my contacts in LA, like LA based musicians, right? So it just depends, man, honestly. And then just where I'm at in my life and my career and my journey. I mean, I love touring. Don't get me wrong. But if it doesn't happen, I'm, I think I'll be fine. You know what I mean? It's cool. I'm cool where I'm at. Uh, when are there more than one guitar? When there's more than one guitar part in a song to learn, how do you know which part? So you have to ask whoever's a part of your band, which one do you want me to focus on? Or whatever one is more prominent, which one is more definite? Or if you could play both, like you could play one part, duck it down, then the next time you go around, you play the next part. You could do stuff like that. Uh, what's good, my guy? Uh, when are you gonna finish the tutorial on jo Joe's Love of My Own? I don't even know. I can't tell you. I have a lot of stuff that's on my plate, so it just depends. Um, at the church that you play at, are the musicians paid? Yes, they are paid. I'm mad that y'all moved from LA. I was on my way out there. Now y'all too far away. 
Well, I mean, the thing about it is, is I lived in LA for seven years. Um, I wanted a house, so cost of living is really high in LA. So it just didn't make any sense. And then where I'm at, you know, the things I wanted in my life and where I'm at in my career, I needed a place to, so I can just spread my wings. And Atlanta happens to be that place. I'm right by an airport. So, I mean, I, I go back and forth to LA a lot. I travel a lot, so it just, it works for me. So, you know, it's good. Enjoying your content, brother. Appreciate it. Um, I've been a guitar for a few months now. It says, how would you recommend for someone to learn to actually make music and create their own ideas? So if you are a camper, I talk about this, how to create your own stuff. So you should definitely check out Carrie's Camp, K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-E-M-P.com, and I'll show you how to create your own music. Um, how do you get work? How do you get to work in the industry? So a lot of stuff happens to be like if you happen to be in a certain area or if you find a band or you find artists that are looking for whatever. There's a lot of ways that you got to network in order to get on. You got to have a certain skill level. Yet first, you got to look the part. You got to have great people skills because all of these things work in the conjunction. You know what I'm saying? So it all works together. Dude, you're great, man. I appreciate that. The Jill Scott Nationwide Insurance um, commercial is a pretty 251 progression uh, to practice for anyone that's looking for chords. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Listen, man, I love y'all so much, man. I appreciate y'all. I got to get ready to go. Um, listen, if you have not already done me a huge solid, subscribe to this channel. Click the bell to be notified. If you're on the fence about Carrie's Camp or you're looking to try to go deeper, go check out Carrie'sCamp.com. K-E-R-R-Y-S. K-A-M-P.com. If you're also looking about those string stand tunnels, we dropped a link in the um, the comments. There's a link and there's also um, a code to help give you like a discount. So check them out. Get those strings, man. You're going to love them. I'm telling you, I got a, I got a box full. You see what I'm saying? I'm not just telling y'all to go get the strings. I got a box full. <laughs> That's how much I believe in the strings. All right. I love you guys, man. Peace, love, and hair grease.